This is King Garnishin Rajul, studying in fourth grade from Bhutan, talking about climate change. Climate change normally happens within years, but due to these human activities, it's making climate change happen faster. See, right now I'm sweating, but I asked the locals who have stayed here for a long time, and they, have, and they said that the place wasn't actually hot. And as you can see, there, is, there has recently been a flash flood in one of the districts, and all of those drifted logs have drifted, and these are one of the consequences that we have to face if we do not take care of our climate. Mother Earth actually belongs to me, you, and every single living thing, from tiny microorganisms to big elephants. The world belongs to them. And we all know you world leaders are acting upon climate change, but it's but we have got no time, so act upon it faster, as we have got no time to relax. Thank you. Nisla, I think um, most of us know Drudul through this video. La. So this video was um, created to be sent to our world leaders during one of the uh, conferences, the world conferences. So ladies and gentlemen, I take this pleasure to welcome our youngest panelists, our youngest climate change advocates, maybe in the country and also probably in the region as well, Mr. Kinga Rinchen Drudul. and good afternoon to you all. Uh, welcome everyone to this session where I will be passing messages from future generation on climate justice. So let us begin. I am an inquisitive boy who always wanted to learn something. I used to ask questions after questions after questions and used to browse through whenever to clear my doubts. And ever since me and my family moved to Gepojin, which is in the eastern part of Bhutan, I could see how terribly hot that place was. And during my school days, when I used to walk back home from school with my friends, I always used to sweat and used to get heat rashes all over my body. But this made me realize something. When I was in Gelpojing, I always used to talk with the locals who are old grandparents. They used to tell me that this place wasn't actually hot long time back. So after that incident, it made me want to study, or should I say like learn, about climate change, and uh, that is how I became uh, interested in climate change, and therefore climate justice must be served for the happiness and the well-being of all the people, especially for the future generation like me. Climate, oh. <laughs> that is why we are gathered here today, having a forum. And the point that we are having a forum about climate change makes a smile on my face. And now let us go to the now. Climate change is a cause due to human activities, including the production of greenhouse gases, which traps heat and causes global warming. And ever since the Industrial Revolution began in the late 1700s and the early 1800s, carbon dioxide levels went higher than ever. And it, this isn't even the worst case because carbon dioxide levels will keep on increasing or should I say, might skyrocket if we do not rethink our actions. And, and uh, look at this, if we don't act upon it faster, CO2 levels might uh, increase and then it might cause many problems on our climate as well. It could lead to more heat waves, more droughts, more uh, heavy rainfall and bigger hurricanes. And as you can see in the chart, uh, you can see that 400,000 years ago, the carbon dioxide levels were 280 parts per million, but uh, now it is 400 parts per million. And the data I have, I have borrowed um, is, from, is from 2017, so if you want to know the correct data, it is um, 420.57 uh, parts per million. And, yes. and uh, Another problem is the release of CFC, which is not Chinese fried chicken or California fried chicken or anything, but this production <coughs> led to this one mega problem. And it was done other than an ozone hole. As you can see, uh, it's not that small. And, and if we don't rethink our actions and keep on producing CFCs, Earth would have to like, stay like this forever. And we don't want that to happen. So uh, this time, the world leaders needed to cooperate. Almost every single one of them needed to cooperate to fix this problem. So 
when they cooperated, this is how they need to cooperate now to fix this climate crisis. But um, scientists are hoping that this ozone hole right here will fully recover at the end of the year 2065. But uh, I know we sometimes are patient, but we don't have that amount of patience. So if you want it to recover faster, then it's that simple. First of all, CFCs, like I said, is, um, is actually chlorofluorocarbons. They are found in refrigerators. Uh, wait, I didn't tell you to change the slide. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> So chlorofluorocarbons <coughs> can be found in fridges and uh, maybe aerosol spray cans. So if you want to like let this hole recover faster, then just stop using hairsprays. That's literally it. Because I know that refrigerators are used for some purpose. Okay, uh, next slide. Look at this beautiful herd of yaks in this photo that my mom took on her way to Singazong. And, and these yaks, I absolutely adore them, but I didn't even meet one yet. But these yaks, they absolutely love cold weather. And if we do not rethink our actions, then these creatures might even go extinct like dinosaurs. And in the future, don't you dare let my children and grandchildren see the yak skeleton system in the museums. But animal extinctions can lead to huge problems. Like for example, the extinction of leopards can lead to destroyed garden fields or something because it will lead to the increased amount of wild goat and sheep population. Same thing with sharks, then it will lead to increased small fish population. So much fish that they might even end up in your swimming pool making it their new home. Okay, um, and what I mean to say is our ecosystem will be disturbed. disturbed. Okay, next slide. I'm not the only one who is worried about climate change. There are many future generations that are also equally worried like me. For example, an eight-year-old girl from Lunana uh, is worried because, uh, so she actually pleaded the world leaders during the 77th UN Assembly in her letter to Foreign Minister Dr. Tan Lindoji. She expressed her concerns about melting glaciers and glaciers becoming bigger. And she's worried about her village <coughs> country. And uh, I also do get worried when Grinch Dam is flooded with logs and uh, during the summertime. I just get really, really scared of that. And since we humans started this crisis, we are also the ones who can combat and fight it. And using solar energy and wind energy is one of the simplest because they don't produce any CFCs or maybe they don't even produce carbon dioxide. That's one of the most simplest ones. Uh, using reusable like paper bags and, or tote bags instead of regular old plastic bags is one of the simplest. And I was also honored to get invited to the UN office. Next slide, please. So here's a picture of me at the UN office with uh, two other children. Their name is Nizer and Pinda. They both came with me, so. I w and I could see how eco-friendly this office was. Uh, they use solar panels. Maybe you can see them in the background like th right there. Almost every single one of the cars are electric and so much more that I can't even explain. Okay, using transportation often, walking and cycling can be used to combat climate change and replacing light bulbs as well. That's it. But climate crisis can only be solved if we bring in the practical solution. Because the reason why we're having all of these co conferences, forums, meetings is, about, is because we're discussing about climate change. But there is no point in doing that if we do not have a practical solution because it is better to be practical oriented rather than just a theory master. And right now I'm going to um, do one of the simplest things to make sure that you're not a theory master. Uh, next slide, please. So these are one of the simplest things that prove that you're not a theory master. So all you need to do is you just need to use the six R's. That's it. Which are rethink, refuse, repair, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And uh, I would like to read the Bhutan Youth Declaration on Climate Action, the future we want. A call to action for a living Himalayas. We, the youth of the kingdom Bhutan, concerned about the impact of climate change in Bhutan and around the world, solemnly acknowledging that Article 5, Section 1 of the Constitution of Bhutan places each of us in the sacred role of trustee, 
of the kingdom's natural resources and environment for the benefit of present and future generations. <coughs> Recalling that Article 8, Section 2 of the Constitution of Bhutan entails upon all Bhutanese citizens in a fundamental duty to preserve, protect, and respect the environment of the country. Recognizing the urgent nature of the triple planetary crisis caused by climate change, pollution, and biodiversity loss. Considering that we hold Mother Earth in common with future generations. In support of Bhutan's vision to create a zero waste <coughs> society by 2030. And before I end my talk, I quote, you are never too small <coughs> to make a difference. <coughs>